Welcome to our thought for today, for today, Wednesday the 22nd of November. Today we're looking at Galatians 3, verses 10 to 14. So as we thought about last week, faith and law were part of two separate covenants uh, that the Lord made. One with Abraham and the other with Moses. But whilst the law comes later, the law does not replace the covenant with Abraham of faith. And the primary means of which we can come to the Lord. Faith is key. Therefore the question remains, why was the law given? And what part does it play for us today? Paul says this, For all who rely on works of the law are under a curse. For it is written, Cursed be everyone who does not abide by all things written in the book of the law, and do them. Now it is evident that no one is justified before God by the law, for the righteous shall live by faith. But the law is not faith, rather the one who does them shall live by them. Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us, for it is written, Cursed is everyone who hangs on a tree, so that in Christ Jesus the blessing of Abraham might become might come to the Gentiles so that we might receive the promised spirit through faith. Probably first it's important to say Paul doesn't denigrate the law. It is part of it is part of God's word. It's part of God's revelation and it has a, an important place within that. And therefore we shouldn't dismiss it. But the question is, is obedience to the law necessary for our salvation? Paul says a resounding no, uh, because of the fact we have already established, we cannot add to the gospel, because the gospel, uh, as we said, is the key means of our salvation through what Jesus has done. And we are saved by faith alone in all of that. If we say that the law and particularly circumcision is essential, which is what the Judaizers were saying in Galatia, then all of the law applies. All of the law must be kept. We cannot pick and choose which bits we want to keep and which bits we think we can ditch. And all of the law must be kept perfectly. And if not, then we have failed. The crux of the argument is the question of how we approach God. Without any merit of our own, relying on his grace and mercy, that's the part that faith plays. Or approaching God on our own merits, that is by works, works of the law, keeping the law as the way we, which, in the way in which we come to God. The point is, of course, it had not been possible to keep the law, which is why Christ was necessary. But the point of the law shows us, therefore, our need for Christ. We're not capable of keeping it. We will fail. The fact, too, that Christ died on the cross for us means it was absolutely necessary under the sovereignty of God. It was such a, a, a drastic thing, such a horrible thing, that if it wasn't necessary then, what are we saying about God? So to say, to say that Christ is not the means of salvation through faith is repugnant. The teaching of the Judaizers by adding the law to the gospel was repugnant in the same way that those who say today that there are many roads to God via the world religions is equally repugnant. The Messiah, the person of Jesus on the cross, dying in our place and rising again, well that's such a significant event in world history that we cannot put anything either beside him or in place of him. Why is the Messiah on the cross significant? 
when we cannot keep the law, which we can't, then the book Paul says is we are accursed. Under God's judgment, rightly, for our sin. But as Paul says here, Christ redeemed us from the curse of the law by becoming a curse for us. The point that Paul is expounding for us is that Christ redeemed us by paying the debt that, that was ours, a debt that we cannot pay for ourselves. The one who had no sin became sin for us. Praise God today if you know the truth and the reality of all of that in your life. If you know Christ in your life, praise God that he died for you. Praise God that he rose again. And praise God that in him we have life that is everlasting. The Lord has made his way of salvation for the Gentiles and in fact for the whole world in that sense. Known from the very time of Abraham. He achieved it through Christ. And in that we need to love the Lord Jesus. Beginning with him in faith continuing with him in faith and looking to him in faith for our future. Let's pray. Father, we thank you for the Lord Jesus. We thank you that in the gospel, we have nothing to add. Our salvation is complete. As Jesus said on the cross, it is finished. The work is done and we go free because he died for us. We praise you for that, God. We praise you for your goodness to us. Help us, Lord, to live by faith, trusting in Jesus day by day. For we ask it in his name. Amen.